Good morning, this is August 6th, 2021, and here we go again. I think it's been a good three months since I did one of these uh, so-called Corona casts. Um, you know, when I look back on it, uh, I suppose it's because I thought we were uh, out of the woods. Um, it wasn't a conscious decision. I mustn't thought through. Uh, I just found myself less motivated to do these um, because it seemed like uh, all the numbers were on our side and um, that things would uh, just keep going that way. But uh, no, here we are. Deja vu. Not deja vu all over again, which seems to be the only way people can say it these days. Just deja vu. And uh, what I'm going to do here with these kind of random musings about uh, our situation now in this country uh, is just to kind of talk through um, how this relates to practice, Zen practice. What 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 springs to mind first of all is uh, a, f a phrase from the Diamond Sutra: "Arouse the mind without its abiding anywhere." So this is <laughs> this is sort of the core of practice, it, regardless of whether. Your practice is a breath practice or koan or shikantaza. Um, arouse the mind. It doesn't mean get excited, get impassioned. It means wake up, be alert, be aware. And that's, that's hard to do if we're clinging to thoughts of any kind. In this case, with this uh, kind of resurgence of the coronavirus, um, it means not clinging to expectations, assumptions that we were out of the woods. not clinging to notions of how things should be, not clinging to ideas of what's fair, ideas of, well, after all this time, how can this be happening? It's happening. You know, animals, it seems, um, they naturally have this this uh, awareness, even hyper-awareness. Uh, and it enables them to adapt to changing circumstances, to move along with, rather than sulking or blaming. They just accommodate. Clouds and water. They have to. They don't have humans' problem-solving ability, not the same. They can't think through uh, what's going on. And because they don't, they're not saddled with unnecessary thoughts, they have this awareness, which is their survival. This uh, non-attachment to the story. And um, we can move more in that direction. Uh, we can, through practice, uh, untether ourselves from our ideas. Uh, and it really, it really rewards us at times like this. Now, I'm not, I'm not 
preaching here. You know, I'm, I'm, it's more looking at my own reaction to the news that at the Zen Center we have to go back to wearing masks. Uh, we have to suspend chanting again. When this, uh, first emerged, this news, uh, I'm not on the committee. There's a committee of people who really examine this. Uh, but when, when they first told me that they recommend this, uh, it was like a kick in the stomach. And that's when I realized I had been in this, uh, idea that the worst was behind us. And I mean, it, it, it helped. Uh, that, that idea was sort of stitched together also by our good luck at this recent session. Last week we had our first seven day session in a year and a half. 46 people in person at Chapin Mill. And no one, it seems, we haven't heard of any infections as a result of that. And we were not masked. Everyone, of course, everyone had to be vaccinated to attend the session at Chapin Mill. But no one wore a mask. And yet, we were clear afterward. I haven't heard anything anyway. So it seemed like everything was going according to plan. So much for plans. Again, just a little bit more about animals and their their uh, magnificent survival uh, resources uh, because of their awareness and this kind of a lantern awareness. You know, uh, one can speak of two kinds of awareness or attention. One is directed um, that's where we can choose to focus on something, one thing, to the exclusion of other things. It's kind of a flashlight uh, aware, attention. And the other is this lantern, this all-around global awareness, behind one, to the sides, in front. And um, it seems to be what most creatures below the human level have uh, as their survival mechanism and uh, and it's and something that we can develop uh, as, as a balance to our thinking mind which is enormously adaptive itself this thinking mind but uh, that alone is uh, is not a balanced kind of use of the mind. So we develop this through practice. We probably, we've all heard of this term pandemic fatigue or weariness, not wariness, pandemic wariness would again be a survival mechanism. I remember, uh, in Mexico, a long, long time ago, when uh, I was there with Roshi Kaplow, uh, and once we were talking about the the threat of uh, diarrhea, amoebas, they call it, uh, and how careful you have to be with what you eat, where you eat. And uh, he said once, kind of half-jokingly, he said, Fear is our best ally. There's something to that. Pandemic wariness. There's too much at stake now with this, these new variants. I guess there's now uh, a, uh, besides the Delta Plus variant, there's a Lambda variant. I'm not for a minute, going to get into the weeds with these things. It's all completely above my pay grade. And they're also talking about additional variants we don't know about yet. 
So we, we, we have to take this seriously. Tomorrow we have a, our first in-person workshop at Arnold Park. Um, first one again, like Sashin, first one in a year and a half. Uh, we had uh, 21 people who registered, uh, who were registered a week ago. We had to send them uh, a letter saying that uh, we need to wear masks for this workshop. We could have canceled it and gone back to the same old uh, online workshop, but we things were changing very fast this week. And, uh, well... As of this moment, uh, there are some 13 people, went from 21 to 13, who are coming. We, I don't know that we've had a, went ahead with a workshop with so few people in my time at the Zen Center, but we committed, so we're going to do it, and it's going to be wonderful to be, have it in person after so long. What is this thing about masks? Oh, probably like many of you, I've just been confounded by this resistance to masks. It's not the greatest hardship in the world, wearing a mask indoors. What is so terrible about that? What is so brutal about that? We can do it again. We did it for a year or more. We can do it again. And and I don't know if this is true, but someone said that if, if we would do that, all of us, not to mention getting vaccinated, uh, then this these, these further variants like Delta Plus uh, could be short-lived. If we if we mask up again now, it may be for a shorter time this time. Just a, a random association here, uh, maybe because I'm fresh out of Sashin from last week. Um, I thought of a sort of an analogous situation where uh, on the sixth or seventh day of Sashin, uh, the danger is thinking... I've done this. I've exerted myself. I've disciplined myself long enough. I need a break now in this last day. Um, that's not a, a winning strategy. But but if we can, in Sashin now, if we could reframe it as as something like this. Yes, this has been a struggle. I'm 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 tired. I'm worn down to the bone. But there's just a little more ahead. A, this a short time left, and 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 if I can just keep at it, keep it up uh, for this last day, um, then then I have the possibility of upending this struggle, at least the same kind of struggle, uh, really getting the better of it getting it behind me for good or for a hundred years or so. We got a taste of the reward this, this spring when we had this wonderful interlude. Um, we got a taste of the, the, of the, of the reward of Sticking with this, of getting vaccinated and and uh, wearing masks, and okay, so we have a setback now. It's not the end of the world. Um, we can uh, bounce back. We can get back to uh, restrictions for a while. We have to. Again, this refusal to get vaccinated. Or, it, or, or masked, I guess, but a refusal to get vaccinated, yeah, someone described it as, it's like um, 
driving drunk. Um, I think an even better one is is uh, uh, driving at night without your lights. Uh, who would do that? Um, actually, I heard, I never saw this, but in Mexico I heard that uh, there are drivers who <laughs> who reason that uh, if they have their lights off at night when they're driving in the mountains or elsewhere, that other drivers can see them more easily. <laughs> um, I can imagine people uh, who who would say, well, well look, um, I'm not... Um, I'm not wearing a mask because I I'm not afraid. I'm I'm fine without without wearing a mask or back getting vaccinated either one. But that's it's just based on that reasoning is based on self interest. It doesn't consider. Oh, you all know this. I'm I why why revisit this? I'm not going to. I just read an article. Um, I forget the title, uh, saying that it's not, it's not, not getting vaccinated isn't just being stubborn and, and being contrary in all cases. Yeah, we know it is in way too many cases, but, but also there are other reasons, uh, the, related to, um, the difficulty of, Getting it together, getting organized, especially with a family, with kids and jobs that it, you're working two jobs or other things. In this article uh, today, they were saying that that, uh, that if they found ways to bring uh, vaccination sites to places that would attract people, fun places, uh, state fairs and other that uh, a lot of these, that they had good luck. They had uh, a lot of people come who were uh, happy to get vaccinated. So there's another another notion we have to be careful not to jump to the conclusion that everyone who is not vaccinated just doesn't want to be. Um, we don't know. We don't know. And then you hear about people who refused to get vaccinated, refused to wear a mask, who end up in, in the hospital, maybe in critical care on a respirator. One might be forgiven for having thoughts about, well, what did you think when you refused? Schadenfreude is not attractive in anyone. Schadenfreude means the, the pleasure in others and the joy or pleasure in others suffering. Um, but uh, there is such a thing as consequences consequences to our choices that uh, maybe can ease feelings of, of um, heartache. Uh, I've heard more than one um, commentator on uh, uh, liberal uh, pro-vaccination commentators who say, uh, what is it? They say something like, uh, it's heartbreaking. Well, I wonder if they're really heartbroken. Um, it sounds good to be heartbroken at others who land in the hospital because of their orneriness or attachment to Oh, political, cultural ideas. I think of uh, 
someone, I don't know who, someone who said, uh, what people usually ask of God when they pray is that two and two not make four. I always feel with these uh, little podcasts that I do regarding the coronavirus, I'm just preaching to the choir, same with Teisho's. But uh, I guess it's a it's a uh, privilege <laughs> to be able to to sort of work through these things aloud. Uh, I hope this hasn't been a waste of time. Thank you.